Well, hello everyone again. Mr. Reeves with you one more time as we are looking today at solving surface area problems. So I hope you, uh, you've you all had a chance to work through some of the uh, surface area problems that are more simple and maybe watch some videos on finding the surface area of things like rectangular prisms and triangular prisms. Because uh, to be honest with you, the problems we're going to be doing now are a little bit more advanced. Uh, they are from the textbook, so I try to give you some more basic examples before we got to these more difficult ones. All right, so we're going to be looking specifically, uh, let's actually, let's take a quick review of just a basic prism. So if you have a prism here, this is called a rectangular prism. First of all, prisms are solids or three-dimensional figures. Uh, earlier, we found the areas of things like parallelograms and rectangles and triangles and trapezoids. Those are two-dimensional dimensional figures. For example, this face right here, the front of this prism, that would be an example of a rectangle in two dimensions. So we would find the area of that by doing length times width. But now we're working in three dimensions. So in fact, most of the things you deal with in life are three dimensional, not two dimensional. But we usually start with two dimensions to make it a little more simple. So when we found area, we talked about how we were finding the amount of space that it takes to fill something up like this to cover a surface, right? So we were just doing in two dimensions. So we would do in this example, length times width, by the way, the length would be 12 and the width would be six. And we would get 12 times six or 72 square inches, right? And we'd be done. But now that we're in three dimensions, we don't just have that one face. That's that face we might call the front. We have this face over here on the side. So if we wanted to find the area of that one, we'd have to do 15 times 60 or 90, and the units on that one would be 90 inches squared. And then, hey, we have this other side straight across from it. The good news, though, in a rectangular prism, this one on the right and this one on the left are going to be the same. So it also has an area of 90 square inches. And this one in the back, guess what? It's the same as the one in the front. So it is 72 square inches as well. And then we have the bottom and the top. It's getting harder to see here because things are starting to overlap. But I hope you can see I've colored in the bottom here. That is a rectangle as well, 12 times 15. And again, if you're having any trouble with any of these problems, feel free to use a calculator. 12 times 15 is 180. So on the bottom, we're going to get 180 square inches and again that's on the bottom and the great news is whatever's on the bottom is also on the top so if we wanted to find the total surface area of all of these we would have 180 times 2 that would be the top and the bottom right top and bottom all right and then we would have 72 times 2 that would be the front and the back, here I'm going to put back here and I'm going to put bottom there, right? And then we have left and right, which would be 90 times 2. All right, left and right. And we could add all those together. So if I went back to my calculator, right, I could do 180 times 2. By the way, just a reminder, when you've already got the answer in there, you can just do the times 2, right? Plus, I'm going to do 72 times 2. Plus, I'm going to do 90 times 2. And when all is said and done, I get 684. So the total surface area is 684 square inches. Now you'll notice that they actually give you a formula that you can use, and you are welcome to use the formula. The problem is the formula for surface area is different depending on the different shapes. And for what we're doing, they're making composite figures, which make things kind of difficult anyway. So I'm going to recommend that you just go ahead and find the area of all the faces and add them together. But if you like memorizing formulas and you want to try to use their formulas, 
go for it. But I'm just going to say, let's just look at the meaning here. All right, so they've got one here where you're finding the surface area of the birdhouse. Again, I'm not going to go through the whole problem. But remember, surface area implies surface, right? So if we were to do this one, we'd have the front, and then we'd have the back. We'd have the right, and then we'd have the left. We'd have the bottom on this one, but we wouldn't have the top. And the reason we wouldn't have the top is because we've got this roof on it, right? So unlike the last one, where we had two of everything, this one we would have two for the front and the back, right? We'd have the front and we'd have the back, and we'd have the left and we'd have the right. Again, this is B for back, but then we'd only have the bottom because the top would not be part of the surface, right? And then we'd have to go to this one and we'd have to find the area of this part of the roof and this part of the roof. We'd have to find the area of the front and we'd have to find the area of, if I could sketch going across here, I can't, how about if I do this instead? Do a quick dotted line going across the back like that, right? So we have this back here, right? We have the front, we have the back, we have the left, and we have the right. But this bottom part here, I'm going to color this bottom part green, right? Do you see how, I'm going to color it green, not blue. Do you see how that is both the top of this rectangular prism and the bottom of this triangular prism? It's not touching the surface. So we don't use that as part of the surface area. So surface area is the area of all of the surfaces added together, and sometimes we're going to have to subtract away some of the parts that aren't showing. All right. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a few more problems. All right, let's take a look at this one right here. All right. So when I was a kid, I used to play with blocks. This kind of reminds me of stacking blocks on top of each other. Okay, these are actually two cubes. A cube is a rectangular prism like we're looking at, but the length, the width, and the height are all the same. If you're thinking square, you're on the right track, right? Because it's made up, every face is a square, right? So cubes actually uh, might be one to use the formula, but we're not going to worry about that. Remember, we got the front and the back, the left and the right, the top and the bottom. The good news is they're all going to be the same. So since it's 12 times 12, 12 times 12 is 144. So the area for this one would be 144 square inches. But how many of them are there? It's 144 square inches times... One, two, three, four, five, six. There are six faces on a cube. All right. Now, if you're thinking, wait, Mr. Reeves, that includes this part, and we don't want that part. You're right. But we're going to take that part away in just a minute. All right. So that is the bottom cube. Let's take a look at the top cube. The top cube is not 12 by 12 by 12. It's 8 by 8 by 8. Eight, But one of the faces is going to be 8 times 8, and 8 times 8 is 64 square inches, right? So this one is going to be 64 square inches times 6. If we were to find all of the faces, all right? Now, now that we know how to do it, if they weren't together, what do we need to take away? Well, what is it that we need to take away? We need to take away the part that overlaps. So let me see if I can do this and have you be able to visualize it. You know what? I'm going to erase that part right there, okay? Just for now. We wrote it down. So I want you to visualize. Well, that's not too horrible. All right. So we have this part right here. And again, I'm going to color that green. So this is the bottom part of the cube, and that part is not touching. I'm sorry, that part is not open. It's not on the surface. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here, and instead of doing 64 times 6, I'm going to do 64 times 5. Does that make sense? Because that bottom part is not on the surface. So 64 times 5. Five, and I'm going to go ahead now and go to my calculator, and I'm going to go. 
I'm going to clear it all out. I'm going to go 64 times 5 instead of 6 because we took that one away, and I get 320. So 320 inches squared takes care of this top cube, right? Now, let's take a look at the bottom cube. You might be thinking, well, just do the same thing on that one. Just do it times 5. But here's the problem. Do you see this part here? That part is still on the surface, isn't it? Right? So what do I need to do for that part? What does that part look like? Well, let me make a sketch. The entire top would be 12 by 12, right? But inside there, what do we have? We have an 8 by 8. So we just want this outside part. So what do we need to do? We need to do 12 squared minus 8 squared. And when we do 12 squared minus 8 squared, it's going to give us that part right there. So we are actually going to do 144 times 5, right? But then we're going to add to that this part right here, which is 12 squared minus 8 squared. Wow, a little bit complicated, huh? All right, so let's go ahead and go to our handy-dandy calculator. All right, let's go ahead and clear it out, and I'm going to do 144 times 5 which is going to give me 720. And then I'm going to add to that. Now let's be careful. We're going to add to that 12 squared minus 8 squared. 12 squared minus 8 squared. So I get 80. All right. And I hope you don't need a calculator to add 720 to 80. When you add those together, what do you get? You get 800. So the entire surface area is the five faces of the cube, which turned out to be 320, plus the five faces of the bottom cube, which was 720, plus this part right here, as shown in the green right here, which was 80. And when all was said and done, we had 320, right? We have 320 plus 800, right? So I'm going to go ahead and add 800 plus 320. And I get my answer, which is 1,120. And don't forget your units, square inches. Kind of tricky, huh? All right. Okay, well, let's plow forwards, and let's look at another one. All right, so just to, to do a quick review, this one right here is an example of finding the surface of a triangular prism. All right, this one is nothing overlaps. So this one, again, you would find the area of these faces. Remember, finding the area of a triangle is one-half the base times the height, right? And the base would be 8 and the height would be 3. So we'd have two of those. Again, if we were going to do that, 2 times 1 half of 8 times 3. And that's going to give us the area of the triangles, right? And then we have 3 right here rectangles, right? And that's going to be, I know it looks kind of slanted, but these are actually rectangles, all right? 8 times 7. These aren't all the same, actually, now that I look at it, huh? This front one is 8 times 7, right? 8 times 7, but if you look at the back, it's still 7 tall, but it's only 5 times 7. So we're going to have the triangles, which is going to be 2 times 1 half times 8 times 3. That's going to be for the triangles. Then we're going to have one rectangle, which is 8 by 7. And then we're going to have two rectangles that are 5 by 7. All right, so when we add those together, let's see here. Uh, Half of 8 is 4. 4 times 3 is 12, right? Half of 8 is 4. 4 times 3 is 12, but I have two of those. So I get 24 plus 8 times 7 is 56 
plus I have 5 times 7. 5 times 7 is 35. Excuse me, 5 times 7 is 35, but I had two of those, so I get 70. All right. So then I have to add all of those numbers together. Let's see if we can do this without a calculator. 4 plus 6 is 10. Carry the 1. 3 plus 7. I'm going to put the top and the bottom together. 3 plus 7 is 10. Plus 5 is 15. And I get 150. 150 what? What are my units here? 150 square feet. Now again, there is a way to do it with the formula, and if you look at that formula and go, ah, I like that formula, then use it. But this way I'm showing you works for any shape, no matter whether it's a triangular prism, rectangular prism, whether it's a pyramid, all of those ones, you can find the surface area simply by finding the area of all the surfaces and adding them together. All right, so this one is very similar to the one we did, right? You're going to have the bottom one with five faces. You're going to have the top one with five faces. And then you're going to have to subtract to find that part right there. So I'm going to let you do that one on your own. Let's see if we can find one that's a little bit different. Flip over to the next page, guys. <laughs> All right, so let's take a look at this one right here. Eddie built the ramp shown to train his puppy to do tricks. All right, the actual problem says describe two ways to find the surface area of the ramp. Let's just go ahead and find the surface area of the ramp. Okay, so again, finding the surface area is finding the area of all the surfaces. Fortunately, on this one, nothing overlaps, although we do have to realize there's some stuff that we can't see. All right, so here we go. Right here, what do we have? Right here. Do you guys recognize that shape? That shape is a trapezoid, right? All right, and do you remember the area of a trapezoid? This is one of the things we studied. The area of a trapezoid is one half times the base one plus base two in parentheses times the height, right? And there's gonna be two of those because if I were to draw a line going across the back somewhere along there, I'm not sure exactly, you could see that, right? That that one in the back is going to be the same, right? I can color that in. Can you see that right there, the front and the back? So there's actually going to be two of those, right? So we're gonna have two times, so I'm gonna put two trapezoids right here. Two times one half, now, base one and base two, I'm gonna call this down here base one, and I'm gonna call this right up here base two. All right, well this right here is 16, and base one is 16 plus 16 plus 16, or 48. So I'm gonna have 48 plus 16, right, times the height. Well, how tall is it between those bases? It is 12. Alright, so this looks really complicated, but it's really not that bad, especially since we can use a calculator. Alright, so remember order of operations, you start inside the parentheses. So I'm going to do 48 plus 16. So I just added base 1 plus base 2. So I got 64, right? And then I need to do that times a half times, and I'm going to put in 0 0.5. You all know that 0 0.5 is the same as a half. There is a way to do calculators, uh, fractions on here. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and do that again. All right, I'm going to clear this out because I want to show you how to do the fraction. So I'm going to do 48 plus 16 equals 64, and then I'm going to multiply that times a half. So I'm going to go ahead and and press the fraction key right here, and I'm gonna put a one on the top, and then I'm gonna put a two, I'm gonna arrow down and put a two on the bottom. And then you can see, and by the way, make sure you arrow out of the fraction, I arrow down and then over, so I have 64 times a half, right? And then I'm gonna multiply that, so I have this 
times a half, and then I'm going to multiply that times 12. Okay, can you see I just put this all in my calculator right there? And then I'm going to put that times 2. Got it? So I've got 48 plus 16, which was 64, right? Calculator always disappears on me. Times a half times 12 times 2. And that all comes out to 768. And that's going to be 768 square inches. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is the front and the back. So the front and the back combined are 768 square inches. All right, so what else do we have to do? All right, I'm going to erase it all because it's going to get super cluttered. But we did the front and the back. All right, so how about we do the top? So what are the dimensions of the top? Well, this one right here is 16. And this right here is, oh, it's the same as that. That is 24, all right? So the top is going to be 16 times 24. And again, it's perfectly fine to go ahead and grab your calculator. All right, and let's do 16 times 24. And when we do that, we get 300 and 84. All right, so we've got the top. All right, what about the bottom? Now again, it's really hard to see the bottom in this diagram, but I hope you can imagine that there's going to be a line that goes across, right? And I don't know exactly where I should end. It should be parallel to there. Okay, but this part right here, I'm going to go ahead and color it blue. This part right here is going to represent the bottom. So the bottom is 16 plus 16 plus 16. We already said that all of this right here adds up to 48, right? 48 times 24. So the bottom... The bottom is going to be 48 times 24. Let's go back to our handy dandy calculator. 48 times 24 is equal to 1,100. What was it? 1,152. And by the way, these are all square inches. All right, so what have we done? Well, the first thing we did was the front and the back. Those were trapezoids, right? Then we did the top. Then we did the bottom. What part haven't we done yet? We haven't done the ramp part, right? We have that one right there. And if you take a look, I kind of covered it up here a little bit. But do you see how that's 20 and that's 20, right? So these ramps are going to be the same size. So there's going to be two ramps, right? There's two of the ramps. So the ramps are going to be, and I'm going to go times two to show that there's two of them. Well, what are the dimensions? It's a rectangle. Again, it looks slanted, but these are right angles, so it's a rectangle, right? So it's going to be 20 times 24, but there are two of them. Got it? 20 times 24, but there's two of them. So let's go to our handy dandy calculator. The area of that rectangle is 20 times 24, but there are two of them. So when we do this, we get 960. 960 inches squared. So if we want to find the surface area of all of those together, that's going to be the surface area of the entire ramp. Oh, wait, I just thought of something. Are they counting the bottom as part of the surface area of the ramp? Hmm. Because if they are, we're going to get a different answer than if they aren't. So if you think about it, right, when this ramp is sitting on the ground, the bottom is not part of the surface area. But if you, like, pick it up and put it on a truck and put it somewhere, then that is part of the surface area. So I'm going to go ahead and include the bottom as part of the surface area. But please be aware 
that it is up for debate, and we'd probably have to ask for some clarification from the writer here. Do you want us to include the bottom, or do you not want us to include the bottom? So we're going to go ahead and include the bottom, saying, hey, when we built this ramp, we built it with the bottom. I'm assuming that bottom's there. But again, if it's not, we simply wouldn't include it. All right, so here we go. I'm going to clear it all out. We're going to add these together. So we have the trapezoids on the front and the back that added up to 768. We have the top that was 384. We have the bottom, which we're going to choose to include, 1152 although we certainly could argue to leave it off. And then we have the ramps, one on each side. Together they are 960. We add all those together, and what do we get? We get a total of 3,264, what, square inches. Whew. All right, so I hope you see that these problems they're quite involved. There's a lot of steps. There's lots of places to make mistakes, especially ones like this one as compared to this one. All right, this is a simpler, much simpler rectangular prism. So these ones are a lot less complicated. Again, you're welcome to use the formula in the book if you want to. All right, but these other ones where they're putting things together, if you're careful, if you're careful, you should be able to do it. All right, well, I hope this video helped you. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day, everybody. Bye.